and welcome everybody to the bangers and classics podcast uh that's with uh, me james Roppert, and him uh david malloy and we've been away for a bit because uh, we have to be mot'd every year and i think we failed on a couple of things and uh, we had to buy some parts and all sorts so um yeah so after a, a brief time off the road uh, I think we're back on it. Is that is that correct, David? What was it you failed on, James? Ball joints. Oh, I fail on I fail on many things. Uh, I come up short on uh, so in so many areas. Um, right. It was a it was a very long um, uh, failure sheet. I believe yours were just advisories, but uh, no, 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 I've, no. I'd blown a gasket. Oh right. Several gaskets. Oh okay. Yeah, my big end had gone as well. Oh all right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so anyway, we, we are back now, and we are yeah. we're in the another year. What, what year are we in this week? Well, I bet we've gone way, way, way back in time to 1960. Um, Crikey! Which, which is yeah, that's a very long time ago. Uh, we, I, I doubt anybody listening um, was you know was, you know was around uh, in 1960. I'm, I'm sure they weren't because uh, most of our our demographic of our audience is very young. Uh, but yeah, that was a long time ago. Um, I think, as I wrote to you, I think it was when things suddenly became colour because mm. the 1950s were black and white. Uh, but we're now in the swinging 60s, so um, there's you know a lot of optimism and uh, things to look forward to. Yeah, well, we had to. We had this discussion a few weeks ago about how film stars of the you know, of the mm. 40s and 50s uh, were born black and white and mm. had to be painted when colour yeah. came along. That's right, uh, and that presumably was true for everybody then. Mm. I don't know how they did it because they're all no. born black and white. If you look at the, look at the old newsreels, etc. Yeah, nineteen thirties, forties, fifties, everybody's black and white. It is. Uh, well, monochrome. It's yeah. shades of grey, even if you want to put it that way. But yes, anyway, being a youth channel as we are, yeah, I'm sure people won't uh, remember those days anyway. No. So here we are in glorious monochrome. <laughs> as we say, glorious monochrome. Yeah. I might as well say glorious monochrome. Yeah. Glorious uh, metro colour, mm. whatever you want to call it. And we have a challenge in 1960. Oh, really? Hmm. Well, I thought we'd have a look to see what the kind of cars we could buy that were registered in 1960. They're available now. Before we jump yeah. into the time machine and actually head back there, oh, mm. or alternatively, we'll jump in the time machine, go back to present day, then back to 1960. What we'll do is we'll look into 2022 classifieds and find the most interesting uh, car registered in 1960 for under £10,000 that's currently on the market. And I think you should go first. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if I've chosen the same car. Really? I don't know about that. Um, there were um, several uh, interesting ones, actually. Um, let me see. I've actually knocked it on the head. I actually um, well, I had it sitting here. Um, I did I did see uh, a couple of not half bad Land Rovers, actually. Series 2 Land Rovers from 1960 that weren't silly money. Um, you know, they were uh, below uh, 10,000, so that was actually quite good. Uh, and one was a, uh, a rescue truck. Um, and I was very tempted by that. Uh, but really what I quite like the look of, and this was seen as the future. If you talk to journalists that are older than you and me, David, um, the turn of the uh, decade there, the most sort of forward thinking car wasn't wasn't a BMC Mini. Um, it was actually a Triumph Herald. And uh, I've come across a rare uh, item, a 1960 Triumph Herald Coupe, mm. um, which you do not see. I can't remember the last time I saw one. And uh, they used to rust, rust uh, to bits and so forth. But uh, this was this is up for eight nine fifty, and it's been restored. It's uh, with a private owner. And it's in very, very good condition. So uh, I rather like the look of that. It, you know, it's such an unusual uh, vehicle to see. They're very sort of de delicate looking cars. Uh, mm. But I just thought for the sheer value of um, uh, uh, and the sort of obscurity of it all in a way, um, uh, it's less practical than the uh, saloon. Um, I can't remember whether the Courier Estate was around uh, by then, but... Uh, uh, I thought the coupe was quite a cute little car. I had a, a little corgi model of one, I think, at one point, I remember, quite fondly. But So uh, I've gone for that, really. I've gone for a British car, which, um, yeah, had a separate sa chassis and everything sat on top of it and uh, had a tiny, tiny turning circle. That was the other thing, wasn't it, in that, uh, yeah, it would uh, out-turn a, 
uh, a London taxi if you wanted to do a, a one-point turn. Uh, yeah, I saw a Herald convertible a couple of weeks ago. Mm. R- roof down on the, on the some rural roads, yeah. so it was nice to see. Wasn't the warmest day, but whoever yeah. owned it, well, yeah, good luck to you, sir, taking your car out and using it. I also saw um, that Vauxhall Cresta I've spoken mm. about before, the green one. Um, I get, it certainly does get used to that car mm. quite a bit, That's, which is, again, good to see. But back to the challenge. There were some interesting cars. Uh, there was a Citroen HY van. I know they've become somewhat devalued by, by uh, being favoured by hipsters, shall we say. Mm. I like them anyway. Uh, I liked them long before the trend for converting them into wood-fired massage parlours or whatever they're used mm. for these days uh, was a thing. I also saw a couple of Italian crackers, uh, an Otto Bianchi, mm. a Bianchia Panorama. Yeah, Series one. one. Yeah. yeah. And Italy, obviously that's a car that's based in the Fiat 500. Slightly mm. larger, but also in Italy. Again, bought under £10,000. You could have a Lancia Appia. Mm. Um, again, fantastic little car. Very much lasted the, the test of time. And I think when it came to the Bianchia, it had been fully restored. Uh, but now it's by the by, because I did in fact go for a Land Rover, James. Oh, goodness me. Yes, I went I went for the recovery truck. Oh, you did go for the recovery truck. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I like I liked it too much. Mm. It reminded me of toys I had as a kid. Mm. It's a Land Rover Series 2 recovery truck. Yeah. It's £9,995. Apparently being sold by a sort of independent Land Rover specialist. Uh, it's the original recovery truck. It says it's not a conversion. Yeah. The chassis and bulkhead are said to be in very good condition. The ad was a bit confusing. I, the way I read it, it sounds like it could do with a new petrol tank. And they were going to change it. Yeah, it might, it might just have been badly written. Um, the crane is apparently in perfect working order. The ad says it needs some recommissioning, and I think something a little bit of tidying here and there would be beneficial, uh, in my view. It's on car and classic. Uh, it's obviously green, and I think it looks great. Mm. And if you want to go to Festival of the Unexceptional or any classic car show, yeah. that would be wonderful. A wonderful thing to have and to take there. Um, just think a Goodwood Revival. They'd probably have that parked outside one of their period garages, James. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, because it's, it's perfect mm. for that kind of thing. And at DSC, it might be very practical as well. Yeah. Uh, if it's in working condition and the crane's working, why not? So, yeah, that's what I would go for. Uh, as ever, it's up to the listeners to decide which one of us has got the, the better option this time. So if you can wake yourselves up, people, and let us know, that'd be wonderful. Yeah. But waking yourself up is optional. Um, anyway, 1960. Well, there was music in 1960, James. Mm. Uh, popular beat combos, believe you believe. Yeah. And I made a note of a few. Yeah. The Everly Brothers had several hit singles that year. Not mm. really my favourites, I have to say. Chap called Alvis Parsley, I think that was his name. Yeah. The hit. Chubby Checker. Yeah. Uh, the hit with the twist. Well, the Alvis Parsley name comes from an ep- um, a Dennis the Menace comic strip. Oh, does it? Yes. Uh, I may actually still have it tucked away somewhere. For some reason, when I was about 10 or 11, that appealed to me hugely. Um, it was obviously before uh, Elvis sadly passed away. But yeah, he was. it was the character in the strip was Alvis Parsley. <laughs> Uh, that was quite funny. Uh, and being a big kid, I still do. We also had Roy Orbison with Only the Lonely. Mm. And some of these, of course, are names that have lasted to this day. So it was quite a seminal year, I suppose, James. Yeah, the, Dr- the Drifters, save the last dance mm. for me. Um, Sam Cooke had a hit, big hit with Wonderful World, and I think another one with Chain Gang. And a couple of Sam Cooke songs appear in one of my favourite films, which I've discussed before, Animal House. Yeah. So thanks for that, Sam. You enhanced it, a great film uh, even further. Uh, Sam didn't live much longer than 1960. I think he was killed in 64. Uh, he was shot by a, a, was it a landlady in a hotel or something. Yeah. So weird. weird death. Mm. Um, and then Jackie Wilson had a hit with a song called Night. But to us younger people, uh, but still of a certain age, uh, Jackie Wilson is perhaps best remembered uh, by a song called um, Jackie Wilson Says, which was by Dexy's Midnight Runners. And they appeared on Top of the Pops, if you remember. The infamous appearance, James. Yeah. Uh, miming the song. And in the background <laughs> was a blown up photograph of Jockey Wilson. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> the darkest player. Yeah. I don't know if it was deliberate or someone at the BBC had made a mistake thinking the song was Jockey Wilson Said. Yeah, it could have done. 
The clip is available somewhere on YouTube of them performing on top of the pops with a big picture of Jockey Wilson, the uh, 1982 World Darts Champion, I believe, in the background. Mm. Uh, and it remains one of the sort of funnier moments, I suppose, of top of the pops. So there we go. So that was that for music, James. you got anything you want to, to well, add there? Uh, really, for music, it was the um, only decent uh, British rock and roll, which uh, was Johnny Kidd and the Pirates, uh, Shaking All Over, came out in 1960. Uh, which uh, is an extremely good track. And I did see The Pirates um, many years ago, uh, ah. later, uh, not in 1960, but uh, yeah, when uh, Johnny Kidd had gone uh, to the great uh, pirate ship in the sky. Uh, but they sort of had a revival in about 77, 78, and they did a couple of really good albums. One was a live album, and they used to tour the circuit. So uh, I think you can you might be able to see a very young version of me in some YouTube thing when they're playing uh, in ding walls or something but uh, uh, yeah they were very very good indeed so yeah that was the bringing, beginning of uh, uh, of course the Beatles had come along in a couple, couple of years later mm. but in a way that was the um, you know the best uh, yeah never, never, never mind the shadows that was uh, it was uh, Johnny Kidd and the Pirates they were punk um, from 1960 so uh, yeah that's pretty good right. would we have recognised you in that video James I mean um, I don't know. Uh, beardless, of course. Oh, I see. I was one, well. Days, uh, far too young to uh, have a beard. Uh, oh, but but, fake uh, beard, fake beard boy. Uh, well, no, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but there you go. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Johnny Kidd and the Pirates. Uh, if you've never heard of them, check them out because they're very good. And the Pirates are worth checking out as well. Right. Gar. Yeah. And in that uh, somewhat corny note, let's take yeah. a break. Back in spite of popular demand, this is Bangers and Classics the podcast that ably demonstrates that less is, well, less. Well, we're back after the break, and there's an announcement to make that I cocked up this week's podcast. There's a surprise, but just so out of practice at these things. The first item should have been, of course, Banger or Classic. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Did the challenge instead. Anyway, we're now going to give you Banger or Classic. Yeah. And I'm just going to say, James, that... Mm. You know, the obvious car to choose that was released in 1960 would have been the Saab 96. Mm. Yeah. So we're not doing that. We're doing instead the Comma FC forward control van. Right. Because they were a huge part of British life for many years. They and their um, successors. You must remember that, James. Uh, yeah, very, very clearly. Obviously called the FC forward control because you sit mm. right at the front with the engine under you. Yeah. It's, it does what it says on the tin. Uh, yeah, that's right. It came out in 1960. Mm -hmm. uh, it was mostly commercial use, but you'll have seen these all over the place, especially by the, even right up to the 80s. Yeah. You'd have seen them. Uh, various guises. Um, the GPO, which would be the General Post Office, which, of course, was a predecessor of British Telecom. And yeah. It was really hard. Some was really yearned for the days of the GPO again. Life was a lot simpler then, wasn't it? Uh, it was absolutely, but uh, yeah, we used to love those vans painted mm. yellow, weren't they? Yeah, so, mm. painted yellow. Post office used them as well. Yeah, red vans are oh, quite attractive looking vans. They were very different because of the forward layout. Mm. Um, anyway, it was introduced in 1960. It became the FB. I don't know what the heck that stands for. I'm not going to I'm not going to hazard a guess. 1967, and then a bit late for the hippie era. It should really have happened in 67. Mm. Became known as the space van. Yeah. And I think eventually became the Dodge space van. It was a Dodge, that's right. Buddy. Yeah. Um, originally the 1.5 litre engine. I think there were later versions with a 1.6 and then the 1725cc engine, as you as was commonly found in the Hillman Hunter. Mm. I think it was a diesel version as well. But they were mainly commercial, but some of them were converted into caravans. They were. Caravanettes. And again, there were still some of those around. Some have been preserved. You occasionally see one. And it's, it's always a good thing. If you want to think of it this way, it's effectively Britain's answer to the Volkswagen Type 2, except, yeah. the, engines, except the engines at the front. Yeah, it's uh, in the proper place. Yeah, yeah it's in the proper place. Mm. But the handbrake cable wasn't. It worked in the, it worked in the front brakes. Right. Yeah, apparently so. I'm, that's, that's, I've never driven one of these things. Um, I wish I had, actually. Yeah. I used to like them as a kid because they just looked so much different from most of the other vans you'd see. Yeah, they look uh, at the, they are from outer space, as you say. It's called hmm. the space van, but they they did look uh, very very uh, interesting. Yeah, um, I would I would say so. Yeah, and they went on into the eighties. I believe the production finished by eighty two or eighty three. So they were still seen on the roads for many years thereafter. You know, 
reasonable frequency. Yeah. Uh, they're a much rarer sight now, but they do still exist. There are some left, and there are enthusiasts who look after them. Yeah. Um, and keep them preserved, and that's a great thing because they are a nice design, mm. unquestionably. But here's the rub: are they yeah. a banger, or are they a classic? Well, I mean, they were they were bangers for uh, uh, some time, and uh, you're probably quite right to point out that probably more survived because of the fact that it it, it was a camper van uh, and used as a camper van by people because vans lead fairly dreadful lives. They really get uh, used and abused and chucked away. Um, whereas, yeah, there's quite a few of these with a lovely pop up roof, um, mm. so that you can sleep um, in a in a one story apartment there. Right? Uh, on the first floor um but uh, yeah i mean without any doubt it's uh, it, it's it was a banger for many years as uh, all commercial vehicles are but um, it's it's definitely a classic um, without any doubt yeah i said it was always a classic for me because mm. i just like the look of them yeah there's something friendly about the appearance there is. yeah that's yeah uh, so it's a classic and that's that no we've got an awful lot for this week's podcast but i think we're going to finish it on a high note are we? because Films, James mm. Films. 1960 was a superb year for films. Yeah. Again, many of these have, have survived the test of time. They're regarded as really copper bottom classics. Uh, I'll start with a film that I'm not really a fan of, but many people are, and that's Spartacus. Mm. Stanley Kubrick directing and Kurt Douglas starring. What, what do you reckon to that one, James? I'm Spartacus, David. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm glad I got that in first. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, was, I wasn't going to. I wasn't going no. to. Uh, no, 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 no. I like. No, I like. I like all the films from that era. Um, uh, there aren't many cars in it, but uh, apart from yeah. that, it's a uh, it's a very very good film. There's not many. Well, I've got one film I think with cars that we can talk about. But the Alamo is yeah. another film from that era. Mm. John Wayne, who apparently was big leggy. Uh, if you get the reference, it's a reference to a different era, really. But never mind. What do you reckon to that? Yeah, well, any film with John Wayne in it really is uh, always superb. So uh, we the well, hell it is. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I don't yeah. think I don't think he made a bad film. So uh, yeah, I'd watch anything with uh, John Wayne in it. Yeah, he had presence. Uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, there was a story about him. Uh, was it the greatest story ever told? And yeah. apparently, well, he was the same. You are the son of God. Yeah. Yeah, you truly are the <laughs> son of God. No, John, you got to do it with more awe. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, you oh. truly! <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> oh, I don't know if that's true or not. I don't think it is somehow. Yeah, well, uh, yeah but you know, if it's not true, it's still funny. Yeah, uh, I don't think any less of John Wayne for whether it's true or untrue. No. Anyway, Ocean's Eleven, the original Ocean's Eleven came out that year with oh, the Rat well, Pack. I didn't realise that. Didn't yeah, mm. you know, there was not many cars. That there's Sammy's. A, Sammy Davis is a dustman in it, isn't he? Is he? Oh, yeah, right. I think he is. He's, he gets a job as a singing dustman. Uh, yeah, it's a bit daft. Um, yeah. Frank Sinatra and the boys, Dean Martin, Peter Lawford, yeah. Joey Bishop, and obviously Sammy Davis Jr. at the Rat Pack. Yeah. And some of their mates. And they made, while they were making the film, they were also doing gigs in Las Vegas because that's where it's set. Yeah. So they were doing some work in the film, and then they go and do some work in uh, the strip at night. Yeah. I think it would be Sands mainly, mm. the legendary Sands night spot, which, again, sadly, is long gone. It's not the best of films, but for sixties vibe, cool sixties vibe, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then we got a film, James, that you know, Psycho. Mm. I don't like it. Oh, there's a car in that because uh, there's actually some uh, 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 some car action in that where she mm. sells her uh, car for a different car mm. and uh, drives away in that. So we're actually on a we're on a used car lot at one point. So uh, that makes it about cars, as far as I'm concerned. Yep. Um, she oh, also, Janet Lee, rather, yeah. yeah, Janet Lee, yeah, mm. who appeared in a John Carpenter film with her daughter, mm. The Fog. She appeared with uh, yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis, yeah, uh, who is Janet Lee's daughter, with of course Tony Curtis, uh, in The Fog. So there you go. Sink the Bismarck. No, no real cars in there, James. Mm. It's always time. Yeah. I, I rather like it. Then, of course, we're, we're getting towards the end of the list. Uh, we had uh, an absolute classic uh, romantic comedy drama called The Apartment. A mm. Billy Wilder film, yeah, with Jack Lemmon, who was brilliant. Jack Lemmon was often very brilliant, and Shirley MacLaine. Do you remember that one, James? Yeah, no, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I do know that one. Yeah, and then we've got two more to do. You like the last one? Yeah, I think you like this one too. There's definitely no cars in this one. The oh, Magnificent okay. Seven. No, there's no cars in it. No, no cars in it. But no. 
But look at the cast. Mm. You've got everybody in it. James Coburn, Steve McQueen, mm. uh, Robert Vaughn. You know, I can't remember half the people. Yul Brynner, of course, Yul Brynner. Yeah. Mm. Uh, excellent film. And then, this is one we can talk about cars in. It's one of the greatest films ever made, I think. It's one of the mm-hmm. funniest films ever made. It's a British film that was a sequel. Well, it was remade, rather, um, about 15 years ago by the Americans. And forget the sequel. Stick to the original. It's the School for Scoundrels, mm. uh, which has, of course, got Ian Carmichael, the brilliant Terry Thomas, and equally brilliant Alistair Sim in it. And it's a comedy, but the cars in it are fascinating. There is one... It's called, is it a Bellini it's called it, in the film? Yeah, James? that's like Benelli, isn't it? Benelli or Benelli. Yeah. Yeah. Which is yeah. actually an Aston Martin, I believe. Mm. Yeah. Talk, I seem to remember reading somewhere it was actually David Brown's personal car they used. Well, it could have been. For the film. Yeah. And was there an, was it an Austin Healy in it as well? Yes, there was an Austin Healy 3000, I think. In that. Yeah, a very early one. And there was the bizarre car that I can't yeah. remember what it was called now. Uh, it, was uh, a real, uh, it was a real car, though. It was just, yeah, it, w- it was, yeah. But obviously the studio had uh, made it up somewhat to make it look ridiculous. But, but yeah, uh, yeah, Dennis Price and uh, Peter Jones, uh, mm. the two best car salesmen ever portrayed on screen. Was that the same Peter Jones who did the voice in yeah. Hitchhiker's Gate of the Galaxy? Yeah. That, 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 oh, okay. yeah. Peter Jones fantastic. He did loads of uh, radio uh, stuff. Uh, And he did a character, and I've got it on cassette, which shows you how old it is and where he plays like an out-of-work actor, and that is actually superb. But it was a radio series, and that's six episodes. So if I can ever remember what that's called, I'll let you know. Right. No, definitely watch it. The the two car dealers in it, what's they called? The Winsome Welshman. Yeah. Very, very funny. I won't spoil the plot by telling you about it, but just trust me, it's very, very funny indeed. And I have to say, for years, I thought the Bellini was actually a D-type Jaguar in drag. Mm. But it's not. It's an Aston Martin. Well, there is, there, actually, if you want a, um, a film with cars in it, uh, Breathless, uh, which is a French film, so it oh, has yeah. subtitles. There's lots of uh, cars in that. Uh, Jean-Luc Godard uh, thing. Mm. It's, all, it's all very French. There's lots of smoking in it. Uh, but there's lots of cars in it. And... Uh, I know the uh, perverts who listen to this like old French cars. So uh, yeah, if you want French car scenes from the nineteen, from nineteen sixty or fifty nine, were probably when this was shot. Uh, you've got lo- lots of lovely uh, Renault uh, Delphines. I think they're in a uh, a Simca at one point. Um, and uh, yeah, there's there's lots of old black and white uh, French car action. Jean Paul Bel is it Jean Paul Belmondo? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, Gene yep. Seberg. So uh, yeah. Because they remade it in the eighties. They 80s. did, yes, they did with um. Oh, what's his name? Richard Gear. Yeah, that's right. But eighty three, eighty four. Yeah. Um, which apparently was not very good. Well, no. Not a patch. Not a patch in the original. They say I, I've not seen either film. I yeah. think I've seen just clips, but I couldn't say to it to know a great deal about him. No, that's um, right. Also, in nineteen sixty, David, there was there was the time machine. Oh. As well, there's not really any cars in that. I I don't think. But uh, are we in it? Are we, we, maybe it's our time machine. Yeah, uh, but there you go. Yeah, so uh, that's an extremely good film, and uh, uh, that's worth watching. It's a very mm. old film now, but um, it was very good. Was that an H.G. Wells film? It's a real story, I should say, rather. Yeah, that's right. And we do use, and if anybody bothers about what year we do, um, there is a tiny, tiny, tiny sort of picture in, in which is influenced uh, by old Rod sitting in the time machine. Uh, because uh, he effectively spins the wheel a bit like us, he spins the wheel and uh, travels in time. So uh, that, that's what what we're sort of uh, inspired by. Someday I'll tell the podcast uh, about my time traveling story when I made a genuine attempt to become a time traveler and mm. was thwarted. And this was a valid scientific experiment, James. But yeah. that's a story for another day. Um, mm. Not much TV to talk about. Nineteen sixty, uh, BBC TV Centre in London did open that year. Mm. And of interest to motorists, that was the year in which the Road Traffic Act, which was a major piece of legislation, was passed, Road Traffic Act 1960. It just contained and brought up to date various offences, etc., and various rules and regulations, superseded in 1972 and again 1988. But apparently it brought in traffic regulation orders. And the significance of those, James, was that they led to the first yellow lines being introduced in the UK three years later. 
Yeah, we, we yeah we got traffic wardens from that. Right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, a reason not to like it then. Two reasons not to like it. Yeah, absolutely. Terrible, terrible thing. That's it. Yes, but that's the law. The law's an ass. The law's a horse's ass. <laughs> Which reminds me of a song, but we can't talk about that one either. So, any other business, James? Any other competent business? Uh, no, not really. Um, if you do want to time time travel, though, uh, a book that uh, came out uh, recently, what I wrote, um, is Auto Futropolis, and uh, that's like a, a time travel book, but it's all made up. Well, I say it's all made up. There's actually quite a lot of facts. Oh, no, I thought it was true. Um, no, it's no, it's uh, no, 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 made no. up. Oh. Um, but uh, yeah, if you want to see um, sort of uh, um, uh, uh, sort of musings on um, what what should have been, you know, maybe a British lady have made cars that worked and uh, stuff like that. Um, we go off in all sorts of tangents all over the world and to, to all different places and through all um, uh, you know parts of time. I actually time travel way back to uh, the dawn of motoring. So. Uh, uh, if you want to um, have some escape and some fantasy, uh, Autofutropolis, which mm. uh, trips off the tongue very easily, um, is the place to uh, go and get that. I particularly liked the section when you wrote for what would have been, what would have happened if Genghis Khan had been appointed chairman of BMC instead of Lord Stokes. Yeah, that's right. It would have, been, it would have, it would have re- revolutionised yeah, yeah. um, uh, motor production. Yeah, um, yes, and Charles Hawtrey won the Formula One World Championship yeah. instead of yeah, mm. I mean, it's all sorts of things. Exactly. I'm talking absolute nonsense, of course. Just trying to derail James as usual. Anyway, what year are we doing? Well, we're going to find out. In Friday, well, we'll take it, James. It's not been done. It's not been done, mm. and uh, yeah. there's a lot of preparation, as you say. Time travel is perfectly possible, but uh, you have to put a lot of um, uh, things in place for it to happen. So uh, yeah, we'll uh, spin the wheel and uh, see where we go. Hmm. Won't be 1960 again. It's not going to be 2000. Thank goodness. Uh, no, as long as it's not 2000. Yeah, I think I've I've I've, I've torn off all the ones that uh, say anything beyond 2000. I don't think we'll go there because it's yeah. dreadful. Yeah, I don't think there's much you can really say, is there? No, not really. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. Uh, we'll be back next week, hopefully. I think. And uh, till then, take care of yourselves. Yeah, cheer everybody. Yeah, I'm off to see uh, Johnny Kidd and the Pirates. So that should be good. I'm going to shake all over. Yeah, yeah. Ah, dear, 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 dear. Long, long, long John Ruppert speaks. Mm, there you go. Cheerio, folks. Bye, bye.